Welcome back. Um, so in this video, we're just gonna set up the the service that will that we'll use to call the server, and for that, we're actually gonna change this proxy to slash API. Um, mostly because all of our server paths are at this endpoint, and everything after this changes, but the prefix of API is constant. And Let's create a directory. So first, we need to go into the client and make directory source uh, services. And then let's make the API service. Uh, we're just going to call it api.js. So there it is. Now, what a service basically is, is its shared logic so we're going to have logic here that we can use in multiple components. Or as you will see, this is necessary for Redux because it's going to be used in, the, in our Redux store. And like I said, services is basically shared logic, just like how Redux is shared state in our entire application. And so first we need we need a request library to to request to make HTTP requests to our server. So we're gonna be using Axios in this one. So npm install Axios. Okay. And while that's happening, I'm gonna go over a little bit about services since uh, most React applications don't use this, but it's a design pattern that I like a lot from working with Angular, so I've adopted it here. And let's first import Axios from Axios. And also, this is how um, the ES6 version of imports, so there's not... Um, so normally you would see something like this equals require Axios, but since we're in a Webpack configuration, we could use the whoops. We could use the brand new version of imports and use the newest version of JavaScript's imports. So, anyways, um, let's. This is also the export uh, syntax. So instead of module.exports equals, it gets turned into export. And it's just shorthand, basically. So let's create a function. Uh, so our, um, one second, let me just code this out really quick. Um, data. So <clears throat> our function is going to be call, and then we're going to export this entire thing. So export default. Uh, call is going to be one of the exports. We're going to um, export all, and we're going to import it in and call it API. So to call this method, it's going to be api.call. And then we're going to pass in arguments. So it should be pretty straightforward how this works. So we're just going to get a response from our request library, so Axios. And it's asynchronous, so we need to await it. All right, so the first parameter is method. And Axios comes with all the normal HTTP uh, request methods like get and post. But rather than having a different function for each one, we're going to use method. And since the method will be passed in as a string and it's going to be held in a variable, we can't use dot notation like this. This doesn't make any sense. So instead, we're going to use bracket notation. So this will be axios dot whatever method is being passed in. So get post and uh, and then 
we need to send in the path so dot get and then open up parentheses to call the get method or post and <clears throat> here we're gonna use the path so um let's use backticks so remember our proxy is localhost colon 4000 slash api so we just need to finish off that path and we're gonna do uh, interpolation to put in the path variable here and then finally we need to send in the data um, because of JavaScript uh, if we're gonna do a get request this part this parameter is gonna be ignored so it, there are no errors will be thrown and it everything will work fine and then we just need to return the response and the way that well not lowercase response oh I misspelled it here okay that makes sense and the way the Axios library works is that the response is going to be held in the data property and the entire response object is uh, has extra properties inside of it so stuff like headers and and other stuff but speaking of headers um, we actually need to be able to set the the headers the authorization headers in Axios and for that we're gonna use another function so export const uh, we're gonna call it set token and tokens gonna take in a token parameter and let's see if there's a token we're gonna set the shorthand for the header so axios dot defaults dot header headers dot common authorization equals and then remember our token is going to be held or is going to be in this format bear space and then the token itself okay and then if there's no token so if we send in a if we use set token to empty out the token so if it's undefined or if it's an empty string or something like that we're gonna just I can't spell today. All right, we're just gonna delete that token. So, axios dot defaults dot headers dot common authorization, and there we go. Uh, one last thing, we need to actually export the set token. Okay. Also, a word um. This is the same type of arrow function as this. It's just that when there's only one parameter, we could actually omit the parentheses around it. And I have my uh, formatter to to actually get rid of the param or the parentheses when it's only one uh, personal preference. It's up to you on that one. Okay, and. There's only one thing left to do, and that's actually to test if this file works. So we only have one component right now, so we're gonna use this. And to use the, hold on, let me import it. So API from, so where am I? I'm in components, so dot dot slash services slash API. So dot dot will get us one level up, and then services, and then API. Okay. Um, <clears throat> to use the service, we're actually gonna want this component to be a smart component. So more than just a constant. So actually, I'm gonna comment this out and create a smart component. Uh, so that means it has to be a class called app and it's gonna extend react dot component no not children Compo component there we go it extends with an s 
And then uh, to have the same functionality of what we had earlier, it will have a render method that returns our div app works. Uh, just to prove that this is exactly the same, I'm going to actually start the server. So I'm going to start both servers actually. So cd dot 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 slash start for our start script. Um, make sure Mongo's running. Mongo's running. Okay. And there we go. App works. So functionally the same, but because this is now a React component, because it's inheriting React, uh, we can finally use the, the methods that come with React. And I'm actually going to uh, destructure component here, uh, just to get rid of this, make it a little cleaner. OK, so what method do we want? We are going to use component did mount, which is a lifecycle method. It just means that this uh, this function will run immediately after the app or after this component renders. So in here we're gonna use um, API dot call and just to make things a little simple. We're gonna do a a login. So that's a post request to do I need to add the slash in the front? No, I don't. Okay, cool. To login with the data that we need. So username is going to be username. And password is going to be password. Oops. And let's hold this into a variable. I'm going to call it results. And we're simply just going to print it to the console. So console log results save and if we open up the console let's see it's coming back as a promise with rejected so what's that mean um well we have to I would like to make it not a promise so let's make this into a, a sync await and save. Do we get a better error now? Localhost 3000 slash login. Huh. That means that the proxy is not working correctly. Because it should go here. Hmm. That's odd. Let's see. Well, on the bright side, the service works, just the proxy doesn't. So, hmm. I will. I wonder why. Proxy. All right, I'm gonna pause the video to go look this up. Okay, so I haven't found the answer, so I'm just gonna get rid of this. And instead, we're gonna hold the host in here. So const host equals h oops, HTTP slash slash localhost 4000 API. And then we're going to add it here. So interpolation host. So instead of using the proxy over here like I wanted to, we're actually going to hard code the, the host in here. So this is where our server lives. And with the API service working, it should slash login 404 not found. What? Oh, oh, I know. I know the problem. <clears throat> We're using the wrong route. So it's actually at. Nope, not that one. This one. Auth slash login. There we go. We logged in. 
So there's our username and our token and our ID. And yeah. So let's see. And then as you can see, we have both servers running. So we this first part is the React server, and then this log, this console log is coming from our server. Alright. Let's kill the server and let's save everything. So git add a git commit set up API service. Okay, so with that out of the way, we can finally start um, adding in Redux in the next video, which unfortunately is more boilerplate for an application to work, but it's necessary. Alright, see you in the next video.